Okay, uh, welcome back. Uh, this is going to be a continuation of explaining the torso. So if you recall, did a circle, did another circle, or if you like, we can do this bean shape right here. Uh, and also, if you like, we can do this right here. So how I'm going to explain this to you is this. So we already decided that right about here, this is where we're going to make the note, the little note for, or the note or the mark for where the, um, where your, the, the trunks or the briefs are going to be. And we said right here at the top, because I think I drew it a little bit more ovalish. So if it's going to be at the top, it's going to be right about here, right in the middle. We said, or I said, this is going to be the belly button. And right about here is going to be the chest, right? So if you're following along with me, um, then that is how that goes. Now, from, I think the belly button should be a little bit more down here. So these are the measurements that that are will make up your torso. So if we're going to do this, what we're going to make right here is a V. And so if you bring this line across here and you put a little circle right here, that's going to be about where your shoulders are going to be and we can go ahead and bring the hands down to there. Now, right at the bottom here, this is where your uh, wrist will end, right about there. It's just a pretty good rule of thumb to make your anatomy look correctly. And just draw it down in one line. So I got this V that's about a 45 degree angle. If you had it down here, you could still do about the same thing, and that's fine. It's not going to be a big deal. If you move that down, you may want to move the chest down a little bit. So we've got the V going right here, and now you got the mark for where the shoulders are going to be. So how f how big should you make the head? And how far up should you make the neck? Well, if we look at it right here, it's going to be about the same space as there. But I like to move it up a little bit. So right now, I'm not going to really worry about the head. Because he here's another little... Uh, thing that I've noticed. The size of your head can also deal with the size of your character's um, body. Women, when you draw women, usually you draw the head slightly bigger because they have smaller bodies. Um, and there are a few different variations that I'll get into later on. But if we're doing it this way, and we're using this little peanut shape right here, then I'm just eyeballing it because that's what you're going to be doing as an artist. So we got this right here. It's kind of in the middle, kind of in the middle of there. You're going to put the line across for the chest. And the reason why I'm not being really precise right now is because right now I don't want you thinking to be too precise. Because I will get into that as the lessons go on. But right now I just want to give you some building blocks. And so what we're going to do is take it from this to a very, uh, an even simpler version of, the, of a gesture figure. And then we're going to take it all the way to a mannequin that you can pose. So it won't just be the arm. So once you get to your mannequin, it'll kind of look something like this to where you're going to draw a cylinder if the cylinder is pointed out. And you'll be drawing another cylinder. And uh, draw an idea for the arm. And so I'm drawing this right here like this. So let's say the belly button is right here. I kind of put, you can put the bend of your arm. So I should probably move that down a little bit, right? So you can put the bend of your, where your arm bends, your elbow. I can't talk today. Uh, you can put that right where your belly button is, just right above. Just think of a pendulum swinging. And think of that same curve line that we're doing. So right now, you can go right back to all the anatomy books that you have that show you how to make a mannequin, and you can kind of get an idea how to deal with that. Also, this area right here should be about equal to this area right here. So these two areas, your upper arm and your lower arm, are going to be about the same length. Now, if you've noticed, going across here, this is going to be where your shoulder is going to come. 
so right here in your center point and I forgot to put the uh, the where your uh, your uh, your collar is collarbone is that little U right there between there and this little ball right in the middle that's gonna be about the shoulder and your shoulder comes down that muscle comes down to about the uh, almost the center of your upper arm so when you're a beginning artist your chest when you're drawing a chest well let's just use this chest right here your chest is not this square thing right here and then you might put your shoulders over here and then you're drawing it like this and wondering what's going on your shoulder muscle actually attaches and it's more of a triangle that attaches through the middle of the chest and everybody's chest is going to be shaped differently depending on if you are a bodybuilder or if you're a runner or if you don't work out at all and so how does this translate to this character over here this guy right here is a little bit overweight so belly button right here if I'm drawing this down and here's his chest right here and let's just say that here's why I'm not really worried about you know letting you know at what height to put the head at right now not right now but let's say you want to make this character a little bit more overweight what if we move the head down a little bit what if we make this character right here overweight let's exaggerate it a little bit let me clean that up so you can kind of see it way better probably should get us probably should fix my eraser but oh well it's too late now so let's put him some hair and so this character and so instead of a muscular chest maybe uh, I think the scientific term is called moobs put a little moobage right there round this guy off a little bit now if he's overweight then the shoulders are gonna be right here but if you're they're obviously not gonna be back over here and he's not gonna be this muscular guy so since his body is more round it's kinda of, it's gonna be right here and it might not even touch the bottom of where it should pelvis wise and so when you're drawing a character that is overweight because not all your characters can be all sexy with you know sexy with cool hairstyles you gotta you definitely want to start drawing a variety of people and so we have this right here now we've turned this dude into more of an overweight character now this is a simplified version of it but you kinda catch the drift drift let's just put like a concept of here a concept of what the the uh, the shoes should be and so maybe this guy uh, uh, maybe he's a business dude or something and you don't really want to draw muscle clothes or whatever I'll get into drawing muscle clothes and clothing a little bit later on but let's just say that he's a he's kind of an executive somewhere and he's got like a little tie and And so now you got a character that's very overweight. And so you can see when you're dealing with measurements that it's a little bit, it's a lot more powerful than just to, um, and I'm going to teach you guys the, the correct measurements for everything. But right now, I just really wanted to simplify some things for you because I'm sure that you got projects that you want to get started on. So I thought it was best to come up with a way that you can go back to some of your drawings and either clean them up or um, have a little bit better understanding of what you're already drawing because you might be trying to draw a manga or an anime right now or you might be working on an illustration right now and you, the chest or this area gives a lot of people a, a lot of it gives them a lot of problems and so what I'm gonna do in the next lesson is I'm gonna draw a little bit more in depth of a realistic chest and kinda of explain some things to you so I hope you'll uh, stick around and check out the next lesson